no matter how famous you get and how wonderful it is that your career has taken off, it means nothing if you don't manage your diabetes. That's our special guest, Yvette Petty, the owner and designer of New York City's Harlem Heavens Hat Boutique, sharing the words she lives by to keep her on track with her type 2 diabetes. Stay tuned for our interview with Yvette Petty on the eve of her 30th year retrospective fashion show during New York Fashion Week. When I first met you and we were working together in the faith-based communities, you were specifically doing church hats. But prior to that, I understand that you were in the Soho marketplace during the 80s. So walk us through the reinvention of Aveda Petty and Harlem 7 through the 30 years. So I graduated from FIT in the 80s. And um, my aunt and I actually opened a very small little um, shop in, in, a, in a space called the Soho Emporium. And it was all of these sort of up and coming designers and these quirky little brands all under one roof. So it was a really fun place to be. So I used to um, sell vintage hats and vintage jewelry and then some of my own designs. And I really sort of outgrew the space. So back then my aunt was my partner. So she got a great idea to move to Harlem to find a store um, space because we've got all those built-in churches. I have uh, automatic customers and concentrate on church hats. And every now and then a stylist would show up at the store and they would say, oh, you know, we're doing a photo shoot. You know, could we borrow a hat or, you know, and that was something really new to me. And in the beginning, I used to always say no. I had not really understanding what a wonderful gateway it would be, you know, to doing bigger and better things. Eventually, one young woman touched my heart when she came in one day and she says, we're doing a, a, a photo shoot. I really can't afford to buy uh, uh, your hats. I'd love to buy them all. I, sh I live right around the corner. Do you think I could borrow a couple of hats for just a couple of hours? And I said, yes. <laughs> From then on, all the young up and coming stylists and whatnot, the answer would be yes. And that was the best decision I ever made because all of those young people ended up working, you know, for Vogue and Harper's Bazaar and just, you know, getting these wonderful jobs. And they remembered me and how kind I was to them. So when they did get these big jobs with these big magazines, they did not forget about me. And that, that is really my journey. Uh, and so far I've had an, an editorial in Vogue eight times. And that's in, not just American Vogue, but uh, Vogue Australia, uh, currently I'm in Vogue China and you know, Italian Vogue. We're gonna take a short break. So I could remind you to check out all of Diva Bedic's podcasts available for free on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, and Spotify. This is interesting because, okay, over the 30 years, fashion has changed, but one of probably the big disruptors that really impacted you was the royal wedding. Because it seems to me, looking at that moment, women who were obsessing about their hair begin to start thinking about hair accessories like hats. Did that change anything for you? That was the biggest, biggest switch, the biggest shift. Those two royal weddings, I mean, starting with Kate Middleton and then uh, Meghan Markle, that got young women interested in wearing hats because they saw these two lovely young women who always wore hats and a hat was an important part of their ensemble. And I mean, the, the biggest challenge that I had had was young women didn't wanna wear hats because they didn't wanna cover up their beautiful hair that they spent so much money on. So those royal weddings created a hat buzz all over the world. 
And really around this idea of hats and hair, because it wasn't just every hat, it was a particular style of hat, like a fascinator. Can you tell us what a fascinator is and why maybe one of the listeners listening right now who is in love with their hair would consider trying to put a fast wearing a fascinator? Well, fascinators are great because they work with any hairdo and they're basically a mini headpiece. It can be mounted on a headband or on a comb or some are, uh, uh, have an elastic piece that you put behind your head to hold it on. But they're very hair friendly and they don't mess up your hairdo. They actually just complement your hairstyle. So it's a good hat for people who don't necessarily want to wear a traditional hat with a crown and a big brim. When we come back, Yvette talks about her experience of living with type 2 diabetes as a small business owner. But first, pick up your copy of Divabetic's first ebook entitled Sweet Romance, A Woman's Guide to Love and Intimacy with Diabetes, available on Kindle today. The idea of managing a small business that has a daily grind, just like diabetes, you've been open about your diagnosis. How do those two things go together about being a small business owner and managing type 2 diabetes? Wow, that's a tough one. But, you know, that's something you work at every day. You get better at it. I try to do meal preps on Sundays, even though when I'm home on a Sunday, I am actually still making hats all day long. And then a lot of times I do pop-up shops on the weekends. And so some Sundays I'm out and about with my hats. So managing diabetes is, is a tough one, but we have to because we want to live and we want, we want good quality of life. How do you think just diabetes and being an artist or creator uh, work together? Well, I remember early in my diagnosis, when I went to the doctor and I had this discussion and I happened to have a, a copy of, of, of the first Vogue magazine that I was ever in. And it was one of the ones where it wasn't just my hats, it was me wearing one of my hats, which was very unusual at the time. And I showed it to um, the doctor. And his assistant was standing there and his assistant said, let me tell you something, no matter how famous you get and how wonderful it is that your career has taken off, it means nothing if you don't manage your diabetes. That just resonated with me that, that, that the fame or notoriety, none of that means anything. If, if you don't take care of your health and manage your diabetes. So I think about that all the time. That, you know, no matter how many fashion shows you do, no matter how many uh, big editorials you're in, no matter how many times you're on TV, if you're sick, it means nothing. Coming soon, Divabetic's 10th annual murder mystery podcast entitled Murder Plain as Vanilla, starring Mr. Divabetic and USA Today bestselling author Tanya Kappas. This year, Mr. Divabetic finds himself in the fight to the death when he enters the Visions of Vanilla baking competition. You don't want to miss it. Your motto is you can make a hat out of anything. What are some of the most surprising materials you've used? I've, I've sort of... Uh cut open an old handbag and turned it into a hat <laughs> so a purse becomes a hat that that that's probably been my favorite over the years i i just like using unconventional materials period you know and walk us through your creative process like how do you even approach the idea of making a hat well a lot of it is driven by the fabric itself the textiles you know, I, I've, I've traveled all over the world and wherever I go, you know, whether it's India or Thailand or, or Italy or Japan, I go to the marketplace. I want to go to the market. I want to see what kind of uh, fabrics and beads and just all kinds of ribbons and lace. I want to see what's out there. So I like to buy um, textiles in other countries and 
just looking at that and then looking at the architecture or the costumes or wherever I am in the world, I get a lot of inspiration that way. Where and when do you design your hats? Like, is it a meditative experience? Are you playing music? I have a home studio and then I have my brick and mortar space up in Harlem. So I make hats in both locations. Um, I make hats ongoing. There's never a time when I'm not really making hats. I make hats at the shop. I make hats when I get home at night. Um, I, I listen to stand up comedy in the background most of the time because you don't have to look up and watch. You can just listen and laugh. So that's, that's my favorite thing to listen to while I create. Well, and also you've managed to bring hats and health together in many ways. So first of all, every year, I believe for the last decade, you've been doing, you've been giving away hats in order uh, with sun protection. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that advocacy work. I give away uh, 400 hats every year in June on National Hat Day in the Sun. And it's to promote uh, and prevent uh, skin cancer. It's so, so important to protect your uh, skin. And then we also, the two of us, have a very similar approach to what you see in the mirror could inspire your care. So I know with um, cancer patients who've lost their hair, you've helped them and you've designed special hats, but also a lot of women with diabetes uh, can ha have hair loss. So using yeah. the vanity to help inspire care really is real. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I am one of those women who have uh, thinning hair as a result of uh, you know uh, my condition. So my hair is super thin. Um, I don't have a ton of hair. So, you know, wearing a hat, it's it 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 just, you know, enhances your your look. And uh it's it's a wonderful thing because when we're looking good, we feel better. The two of us partnered on a faith-based program called Hat Boxing several years ago, which was just awesome, where people would come in, they would have hat boxes, they would decorate the hat box with a message about diabetes or diabetes self-care, and then the winner would receive one of your hats. What was that like for you, that experience? That was like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun, because people really got creative with it. And I remember we put all the, 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 the finalists, the hat boxes in my store's window on display for a while. And it, they got so much attention. But I remember people really were picking interesting themes. I think my favorite one was a, was a hat box that was covered with vegetables. It was just really, really interesting. And it was just so much fun to see. But that was just such a creative idea of yours <laughs> that uh, it, it was just so much fun and a powerful message at the same time. Stay tuned to get an insider's look at Yvette Petty's stunning 30-year retrospective hat fashion show. You don't want to miss it. This particular show is going to be a walk through my design evolution. I'll be showing uh, a couple of hats that I made 20 years ago uh, and hats, uh, you know, along the years up until current. Eva Bedick, it's all about attitude.